Hi everyone, I am Iwana the Iguana and today we'll be talking about why the avocado shouldn't technically exist. The avocado has become a staple superfood in recent years, but did you ever stop in the middle of your brunch to wonder why it has such a huge pit? From a young age we learn about how seeds are spread by the wind or birds or small animals that ingest them. But how would a tiny bird be able to ingest a huge avocado pit and spread it across the globe? The answer has to do with evolution and how nature doesn't always keep up with our needs. The avocado was first cultivated in Mexico around 10,000 years ago. But before it was domesticated by Central and South American tribes, the avocado used to live happily on a planet populated by the megafauna. At the beginning of the Cenozoic era, huge mammals used to walk the earth. We used to have stuff like mammoths and mastodons and wild horses and something called the giant ground sloth. My friends in London might recognize this animal from the terrifying skeleton in the Natural History Museum. The avocado and the megafauna had a symbiotic relationship. The mammals were large enough to eat the fruit in one bite with the pit and everything and get a lot of fat from the pulp. The avocados benefited from having their seeds dispersed. After ingesting the whole fruit, the large mammals would walk great distances and defecate, essentially planting the undigested pit in the ground. Now, a mere little avocado ended up in an entirely new place where it could germinate and grow a new tree. Alright, so all was well on Earth until 13,000 years ago, most of the megafauna suddenly went extinct. No one knows how or why or what happened, but they all just disappeared. JK, it was overhunting by humans and or climate change, which sounds really familiar. Moving on. Now, all of the animals that can eat avocados are gone, but the poor little avocado has no idea. It doesn't know that it should evolve to better suit the needs of other existing mammals. And with a lifespan of hundreds of years, the avocado tree simply cannot adapt quickly enough to suit the current needs of its ecosystem. The tree just keeps making fruit in the hopes that a mammoth will come and eat them, but it never happens. The fruit fall to the ground and rot. There is a period of 3000 years between the last mega mammal going extinct and humans starting to consume avocados. So what did the avocado do to stay alive until it could be found by humans? Turns out no one really knows. I went down the rabbit hole and I found this paper from 1982. Authors Daniel Jensen and Paul Martin provide some strong hypotheses as to what they think happened. For now, the two most widely believed theories are number one, other mammals like large felines or cattle took on the role of the megafauna and started ingesting whole avocados. Or number two, rodents like mice or squirrels picked up the rotten fruit from the ground and buried it for the bands, really. So, as you can see, neither of those two hypotheses are really strong enough to explain the survival of the avocado. All we know is, despite being a menace to pretty much everything else in nature, humans were truly the saving grace of the avocado. We took this inedible fruit, which used to look like this and be made up of mostly toxins, and created the elite brunch food. The world may never know how this little guy made it for those 3,000 years, but next time you pick one up in the supermarket, think about how hard its ancestors had to fight to stay alive. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, subscribe, and share it around with your friends. I'll see you next time. Bye!